This week on Museo Hub, we chat to the guys from Abriact. Welcome to Museo Hub. This week we have very special guests in Studio G, and that's Abriact. Welcome, guys. How you going? Now, if you'd just like to all introduce yourselves um, and what instruments you play in the band. Uh, I'm, I'm Matt, and I do the vocalists, and I've uh, only been in the band for a few months, but um, enjoying myself already. G'day, I'm Chris. Uh, I play bass. I'm Tim. I play the drums. I'm Lee. I play guitar. I'm Seth. Well done, guys. Now, just uh, wondering if you could um, work your way along, just telling us how you uh, got involved in music. How, what was your first interest in music? Ooh, it's a long story for me to tell. I was just saying to Lee before at breakfast that the first CD I ever bought was Frog Stomp, so that probably set the tone for how things were going to end up. But um, I don't know, for me, getting involved in music myself, it was watching my friends in bands playing shows, um, in the city, places like the Art House and, and watching bands travel through from from different states and just wishing that, that I was doing the same thing and, and eventually, uh, after mucking around in a few bands that did nothing, um, started a band called Half Mast and and we we did all right for a couple of years and, uh, and these guys ended up looking for a vocalist about uh, six months ago now, maybe less, and... Um, I was just in the right place at the right time, and here we are. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, the reason that I got into music is pretty easy, yeah. pretty simple. My father had a, a PA and a guitar and some other equipment set up in the lounge room when I was really young, and I wasn't allowed to touch it. So <laughs> that's why. Yeah, and it went just went from there. Um, and then... Um, Got a Pink Floyd CD, or it was a tape, when I was quite young. That was it. Done. Um, well, my dad's always played drums, so I grew up around the drums. I did actually want to play guitar as a kid, but had an accident and fell off my top bunk and landed on the guitar and shattered it. So then I just decided I'd take up the drums, care of dad, so he taught me the rudiments. And then I taught myself from there. First CD I bought, I think, was also Frog Stomp. So that was obviously going to have some sort of bearing on where things went to. Yeah. So that's about it. I decided to play guitar when I saw Thunderstruck by ACDC on television in 1990. Um, I just saw... Angus Young carrying on like he does, and I'm like, that's that's cool, <laughs> basically. And I love, oh, obviously, I loved music before that, but it, in a short amount of time, I had all their albums and had a guitar that looked like Angus's, and it was basically as simple as that. <laughs> I suppose he still got the SG. <laughs> and I think the first one of the first albums I would have brought was, um, yeah, The Razor's Edge by ACDC. Okay, could you just um, run through how you got together, how Abriac formed? Um, Tim and I met in high school. Uh, I moved to Bendigo two days before Year 7 started. I didn't know anyone. And Tim and I were in the same homeroom. And it, was, it took till about September. We didn't know each other. But we, uh, they went around the room asking people what they did. Tim said he played drums. I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. I've got to talk to this guy. And... Um, we started playing together then. So it was about uh, four years later, three, four years later, we actually met Chris at an um, after-school fight at the QEO between two schools. <laughs> Nothing happened, but we got introduced to Chris and told he played bass, so we're like, oh, well, he plays bass, so <laughs> you're in the band, <laughs> basically. So. <laughs> so you started playing in Bendigo first, obviously local gigs. Um, we did, yeah. 
Um, we started playing in pubs when we were underage. Uh, at the so old... Well. Yeah, of course. But um, the old Crown Hotel, we used to play there a fair bit. And Bundy Bar, Bundy Bar which I think this is called the Sandbar these days. So from there, how did it evolve? How did it get to where it is now? A lot of hard work? Yeah, well, oh, well, we never took ourselves very seriously, and I guess we still don't really take ourselves that seriously, but um, we never really tried to do anything when we were younger. We just um, played and did some gigs. We never really played out of town that much. We played in Geelong a couple of times, I think, and, yeah, things just kept plodding along, and then uh, we ended up breaking up 2003, and we got asked to do a reunion show in 2008, and uh, got offered heaps of other gigs because of that. And so I thought, oh, let's write a new song. <laughs> and then we wrote one, and we're like, I think we need to keep doing this. So yeah, but it's obviously a totally different band. So we basically consider this band as starting in 2008, because we new songs, different vibe, different sound. Okay. So, guys, let's move on to songwriting. Um, how do you go about writing songs? Is it just lyrics by one person and music from someone else? or? Um, generally, uh, Chad comes up with the, the, um, the, like the main riffs, I suppose, the, um, the structure of the song, and then Tim and myself just do our thing to it. And Matt does the same, writes his words over top of it. Um, we go back and forth on the internet a lot. We email tracks back and forth until it's finished. Um, sometimes, uh, like basically the three of us will practice together uh, without Matt. Uh, Matt or um, can pretty much write his vocals and his bits and pieces at home. And then once we all feel that it's ready to go, we have a crack at it at rehearsal and... Go from there. Okay. Um, tell us about Triple J and Groove and the Moo. How did that all happen? Um, we uh, we managed to get a bit of luck through the Triple J Unearthed website. Um, managed to get some attention from people that worked at the station. And um, Groove and the Moo was actually a competition that they ran on the Unearthed website. And being that we had tracks uploaded to the website, we're automatically in the running. Um, I think we were just lucky that with Groove in the Mood that it was Bendigo locally. So, you know, of Bendigo bands, I think we were probably just doing the best at the time. So, yeah. so where where to from here, guys? Uh, have you got any big plans for the future? What's your next step? That's a good question. No, we've got plenty of shows booked coming up and uh, lots of people approaching us for for shows and trying to help us out with booking and stuff and we've just started writing for a second album so very early but keen to get into that yeah that's it we've got a we're filming for a, a second single release um in, in the following weeks I'm not sure when we're going to get it out but uh as soon as possible hopefully so do you still have to chase work or are you finding the work starting to come to you now it is starting to come to us, yeah, there's, um, but it's only paid off through through Lee's hard work of uh, networking over the years, you know, just uh, just emailing and being friendly as hell to anyone and everyone that you can. Um, how can people find you? Is there a way they can uh, check up when your next gig's on, etc.? Facebook or web page? Well, we do we do have our own web page, but obviously the Facebook we're always posting when the next shows are on. Yeah do the events and you invite all your friends to them and that's basically the simplest and easiest way to see when we're playing next and where. Okay guys, we might uh, wind it up there. Um, that's about all we got time for, but thanks for coming in. And uh, that's the end of our show, but as usual we have a video clip to play and uh, this week obviously it's the guys from Abreact and I'll let them introduce it. See you next week. This song's Bomber. It's our first single release and first video clip release. It's a nice uh, charcoal animation done by Kane White and it's turned out pretty well. Hope you enjoy it. Oh.
like to stay connected with Muso Hub, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter.